Hey there, Marion Elementary students. This is Mr. Davis with second grade. And today we're going to continue with our reading and doing our tic-tac-toe read aloud boards. We did this last week and we'll do it again this week with some of ours. If you've already got tic-tac-toe in one direction, try to get it again in another direction. The, today we're going to start with the story of Last Stop on Market Street. This is written by Matt De, De La Pena. And pictures are by Christian Robinson. Drag it so you can see the book as I read, too. CJ pushed through the church door, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. See CJ coming down the steps there in the yellow shirt. My pages are wanting to stick together today. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, How come we gotta wait for the bus and all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see the big one drinking through the straw? C.J. looked for a long time, but never saw a straw. Can you see the straw, that lo the tree that looks like a straw? From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave C.J. a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? So there's his friend getting ready to go in his car. Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the door swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a, co pulled a coin from behind C.J.'s ear, placed it in his palm. Nana left, laughed, excuse me, her deep laugh, and pushed C.J. along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar, and an old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a big, great big smile and a good afternoon. She made C sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knitted. it. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go it nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side. Watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard and spot with a spotted dog. CJ gave him his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing? Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I could have one of those, he said. Nana set down her netting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. 
Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes, and then it closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. See there, the boys had a um, iPod that they were listening to music on. In the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full, and he was lost in the sound, and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop, stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what is beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over the soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful, beautiful. Mr. Davis got tongue tied there. Sorry. I'm going to restart that page. CJ saw a perfect rainbow arching over the soup, their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus rounding the corner out of sight, and the broken street lamp still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, Me too, CJ. Now come on. And that is the end of our story. So when we think about these people, CJ and his grandmother and the fascinating people they meet along their bus ride and the different things that are make these people unique, I want you to take an opportunity to look at different people as you are out and about and see how they are very unique in their own way and that they are different from you. Go ahead and pick out your question for the your tic-tac-toe board and be answering that. Have a wonderful afternoon and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Here are the list of your questions for the tic-tac-toe board. Enjoy answering your question for your story. Have a great afternoon.